Welcome to lecture number 11 for ECE 376 Embedded Systems, Stepper Motors. Now, give up a little bit of background of what stepper motors are and how they work. Here's some animations from uh, animationsphysics.uns, University of New South Wales, Australia. Uh, kind of shows how motors and generators are one and the same thing. If you take a magnetic field and take a coil and spin it around it, that produces a voltage which is a sine wave. Take that to a load, I get a current that's a sine wave. This is a generator. Generators and motors are one and the same thing. From duality, if I then apply a sine wave to the voltage, it'll spin. That's an AC single phase motor. What a DC motor is, and you know, most motors that you're familiar with, is kind of the same idea, but I add a commutator. What the commutator does is as soon as I go through that zero crossing, I flip the leads. So I get a rectified sine wave. What that does is if this is a generator, also known as a dynamo, as I spin the coil, I'll get a DC voltage. That's the original uh, motors from Thomas Edison's age, early 1900s. They had a bunch of dynamos connected as more and more people started using electricity. You power up the next dynamo. They actually discovered DC motors by accident. Notice that some of the dynamos would spin, actually all the dynamos would spin, on their own, and they would fight you if you try to stop them. That's how we discovered DC motors. Apply a DC voltage to this guy, and it'll spin. And there's also the AC synchronous motors. That would be a stepper motor. If I apply sine and cosine on the x-axis, x is cosine, y is sine, what I get is a rotating magnetic field. So what a stepper motor does is the stepper motor is actually a two-phase AC synchronous motor. If I apply cosine on one axis, sine on the other axis, I get a rotating field. Have the rotor being a permanent magnet, the permanent magnet will follow the rotating field. So the speed of rotation is the speed that the motor spins. Uh, this is actually showing an AC single-phase motor where I have a capacitor. A capacitor differentiates um, the current. So if I have cosine on the x-axis, I'll have the derivative of it, sine on the y-axis. gives me a rotating field. Um, I, I lose a lot of amplitude with the capacitor, so it's not actually pure circle. It's more of an ellipse, but still it's a rotating field. That's the idea behind stepper motors. I want to apply cosine on one axis, sine on the other axis. As it spins, the motor will rotate. There's also a couple other types of motors. If you have a three-phase AC, I'll have a three-phase AC synchronous motor, and this is actually an induction motor. Same idea, but that's the different types of motors. What a stepper motor is, is a two-phase AC synchronous motor. Uh, the way it works for DC, or for stepping, for microprocessors, I've got a permanent magnet on the inside. If I apply cosine versus sine, I get a rotating field. Um, if instead I energize the left coil, the magnet field will go left. Energize the top coil, it'll now point up. Do minus left coil, meaning apply a voltage to C rather than A. I'll attract the opposite south, and north goes to the right. Do the opposite on the top, it'll attract south to the no south up, and north points down. I get rotation. That's called stepping. And really what you're doing is you're doing a discrete approximation to a sine and cosine. There's a couple types of different uh, couple, yeah, couple types of stepper motors. Uh, there's a bipolar and a unipolar. Uh, bipolar stepper motor tend to be the larger stepper motors. I just have four leads, uh, one coil on the east-west side, one coil on the north-south side. There's also unipolar six-lead motors. I have the center tap. And what the center tap does is if I apply 12 volts at the center tap, Take the left side tied to ground, current goes left. Take the right side tied to ground, current goes right. So with a single power supply, I can get current or negative current just by using two transistors as a switch. That's the advantage of unipolar. If you have an H-bridge, if you have a four-lead motor, you need to use an H-bridge. And fortunately, we have H-bridges. So we're going to be using the four-lead motor. The H-bridge that we're using come out of China. Uh, these came on the market about two years ago in 2018. It's pretty amazing. If you want to build an H-bridge from scratch, it's going to cost you about $5 in parts. 
For $2, you get one that's already built. Uh, plus, it operates up to, I think, 37 volts DC, up to uh, 3 amps. So, it's a pretty good buy for $1.99. Uh, likewise, we have a whole bunch of these. There's some in your kit. The way it works is I've got power and ground. You need 5 volts and 0 volts. Uh, the inputs are TTL levels, 0 volts, 5 volts, so pick and drive them. This third lead is the power to the motors. It can be anything you want, up to, I think, 37 volts. Uh, we're just going to use 5 volts because that's available. If you have less voltage on the motor, I have less torque. Um, but there's still plenty of torque to spin the motor. One phase of the stepper motor goes on the left side, one phase goes on the right side. So here's one way to tell where the leads are. Motors and generators are the same thing. If I take a motor and or stepper motor and spin it, it spins freely. If I then take two of the leads that are in the same phase and connect them to a speaker, so here I've got the red and yellow leads. It's driving the speaker. The stepper motor is a generator. So you can see the rice screen's moving. If I tie that to an LED, the light will be blinking. And to illustrate that, here is an LED. As I turn the stepper motor, the light blinks. One blink per step. If it's been fast, it looks like it's always on. That's a generator. If I go slow, you can see the blinks. So the red and yellow are one phase. Connected to a different phase, there's no current flow. You won't see anything. So again, one phase, the blue and the orange go to one side. The red and yellow go to the other side. Uh, direction doesn't really matter. Which one you put them on doesn't matter. If I flip two of the leads, then I'll just get the motor spinning the opposite direction. And software. I need to spin the motor. And the way you do that is there's either full stepping or half stepping. Full stepping, what I do is have the one go left. You're just kind of shifting right. And what's happening is if I first energize A, the magnet points up. Energize B, it'll now point left. Energize C, that's like minus A. Uh, south goes up, so north is pointing down. Energize D, which is minus B. South faces right, north faces left. So there it's rotating or stepping. And notice the pattern. I want to energize A, then B, C, then D. A and C are on the right side, B and D are the left side. So I want to energize RC0, then RC1, RC2, RC3. So these are switched. Instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, I switched the, little lead, the middle leads. See that? Uh, notice the middle leads are switched or flipped around. If I go RB0, RB1, RB2, RB3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, it's rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. If I go backwards, 3, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0. It spins clockwise, the opposite direction. So now we want to do that in software. That's the hardware connection. In terms of software, I want to send this pattern. There's also half-stepping. Um, that takes the you know, 1, 2, 4, 8, and inserts both of them on. What half-stepping does is I first have it point up, then A and B are turned on, point at 45 degrees. Then B is turned on 90 degrees, B and C 135 degrees. Um, half stepping gives you 200 steps per rotation. In terms of software, this would be the first program. To get it to rotate, I'm just going to use a thing called lookup table. This is a global variable. If I say table of 0, I get 1. Table of 1, I get 2. Where these numbers come from is that's just the bit pattern. This is binary 1, 2, 4, 8. Make that my lookup table, and I can just rotate through the lookup table. This is counting mod 4. So as I count mod 4, I just spin through the table. And what that looks like is this. I'm just going through the table, now putting 1, 2, 4, 8, 1, 2, 4, 8. Stepping every 100 milliseconds, and what you get is this. I get a stepper motor that's rotating, one step every 100 milliseconds. In addition, it's keeping a running track of how many steps I've gone through since I hit reset. Every 100 steps is one rotation. So let's start right here. 
uh, when it's facing straight down, that's 2086. At 2186, it ought to be facing straight down again. And I lied. Okay, that's straight up. This is actually 200 steps per rotation. And there is 2286, 200 steps per rotation. Now, suppose instead of having the motor spinning constantly, I wanted to vary the speed of the motor. The approach I like to do is first hard code it, get the motor to spin. I'm always spinning the same direction. It's always 100 milliseconds per step. Once you get that to work, now vary it. Instead of making this a constant 100, make that a variable. Instead of always going forward, I could make that either plus 1, 0, or minus 1. Zero, minus 1 would make it count backwards, uh, go backwards through the table. 0 would have it hold, plus 1 would have it go forward. So a second program would do that. If I push the buttons, I can now take uh, these guys, instead of being plus 1, make a direction, change direction. Plus 1 is forward, 0 is stopped, minus 1 is backwards. Instead of what milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, vary it. What that does is I can now vary the speed of the motor based upon the button that I push. For example, um, RB3 is forward slow, stop, reverse slow, reverse fast, forward fast. So we now have a speed control. For stepper motor, so that's controlling the speed of a motor. Uh, now, instead, suppose I want to control the angle of the motor. Uh, one way to do that is instead of having spinning constantly, I'll have a new variable called reference. That's where I want the motor to be pointing, and there'll be either zero steps, 25, 50, 75, or 100 steps. Again, 100 steps ought to be 180 degrees. And then I'll check. If the current motor's current position is less than a step, I'll go forward one. You know, that's all you want to do. Just every loop, I just go one step, one step forward. Next loop, go another, loop, another step. Eventually, when the two match up, I'll stop moving. If I've gone too far, go backwards one step. So every loop, I just either go plus one, minus one, or stop. When you loop often enough, eventually it matches up. So here you can see where LCD displays are useful. I'm displaying where the motor should be at 100, where it actually is. When it gets there, it ought to stop. If I want to go back to zero, it's going to spin back to zero and then stop. That ought to be at 180 degrees. Go to 50, that's 90 degrees. 75, 100. And if I try to mess it up, let's go to zero. Uh, change my mind. Let's go back to 100, back to zero, back to 100, back to zero. It doesn't really care. It's just going through the loop. Every loop, it either goes plus one, minus one, or stops. That's position control for stepper motor. Uh, what you do with stepper motors is kind of up to you. This is part of the fun of being an engineer. I've got this tool. I've got a motor, and I can control the position fairly accurately. Uh, what do you do with it? There's also other types of stepper motors. There's a linear actuator. This is actually a stepper motor that's a little bit backwards. On a stepper motor, the motor is stationary and the shaft rotates. For a linear actuator, the shaft is stationary and the motor rotates. If I make the shaft a screw, this is a 3816 screw, 16 rotation, 16 rotations moves the shaft one inch. At 200 steps per rotation, this is 3,200 steps per inch. So I can control the position extremely accurately with the stepper motor. It also has quite a bit of force. This can produce up to 50 pounds of force. They sell for $350 new, $17 on eBay, uh, when you can get them. Just search for Eastern Air Devices Linear Actuators, and occasionally they appear on eBay. There's also bigger ones that are 350 pounds force, uh, $700 new. We bought them on eBay for about 20 bucks because we need, need them. I'm not really sure why we need them, but I'm pretty sure we need them. 
and with those you can actually exert some force. Uh, what they've been used for in the past, one of our students built a trebuchet. That's a siege engine from France back in the Middle Ages. The linear actuators control the angle of the trebuchet, so you can try to hit your target. This is another use of the linear actuators. It's an equatorial platform. It tilts the telescope left, right, forward, back, and rotates it so that the telescope will follow the stars. But that's some of the things you can do with a stepper motor. Uh, and how you use them is really up to you. Stepper motors are not real efficient. They're really not designed for RC cars or things you want to move. They're designed for precise, precise precision control. There's one other thing to cover on stepper motors. It's micro-stepping. What you're really doing with the inputs is you're trying to approximate a sine wave. I have A energized, neither energized, C energized, neither energized, A, none, C. That's trying to approximate a sine wave. And coupled with the, this is cosine, the other axles would be sine, I get a rotating field. So in this case, I get actually four steps per cycle. Microstepping is take that sine wave and split it up into smaller parts. If we make that a pure sine wave, instead of the motor stepping, it would actually be a nice smooth motion. That's an AC synchronous motor. Um, if I try to split this up into different levels, instead of just having three levels, you know, 5 volts, 0, minus 5, make that, you know, 10 different levels, that's microstepping. I get even better resolution. And that's kind of the things you can do with stepper motors. There's one in your lab kit. Part of the challenge is trying to figure out what you do with it how, and have some fun with it. It's actually extremely easy interfacing stepper motors to microprocessors. That's really what they're for. Um, given a microprocessor, then, I can sit there and control the position or control the speed. Um, and how you use it is up to you. That's lecture number 11 for ECE 376, Embedded Systems on Stepper Motors.